laser. This PAX preview is brought to you by Netflix. Hey guys, Terry here for F3 Games, and I'm in front of the Bethesda booth at PAX right now, checking out the Elder Scrolls Online. You guys have probably seen some coverage of this game on our channel before. This is actually my first time getting hands-on with it, so it was quite an experience. Um, they basically threw us into the beginning of the game after the tutorial. Uh, I explored the town a little bit. Visually, it does look a lot like Skyrim. The environments look pretty much straight out of Skyrim, but perhaps with a little bit more detail to them. Uh, the characters, I can't say they look quite as good as Skyrim, uh, but that's probably to be expected from an MMO. Um, and I just sort of roamed around the city. I accepted a quest from a woman named Rana who asked me to find uh, a brother and sister who had gotten lost in a cave. So I went down to this cave that was apparently guarded by a frozen man who was very creepy. Uh, you still sort of get that weird, eerie, but also kind of funny sense that Skyrim is, is really uh, known for and that's definitely present here. Uh, the, the quest that I had, it wasn't just like go into the cave and kill this guy. It was like, you go into the cave, you have to find clues hidden around the cave about who this guy is. And then once you do that, you can go like present them to him and basically challenge him. Uh, there, are, of course, there's a lot of wildlife in the game. The cave was filled with polar bears. Uh, the combat seems a little bit more strategic than I was expecting. Uh, it's not just like you go up to a person and repeatedly hit the one key or, you know, just slash them to death. For example, when a polar bear attacks you, uh, he will do like a giant thing where he stands up and then a cone will appear in front of him and that'll sort of be like his damage area. So you want to step out of that cone when he does that. I noticed that um, I was using a one-handed weapon because you can use pretty much whatever weapons and armor you want. It doesn't, it's not restricted based on uh, your class. So I was using a one-handed sword with a shield and even if you block it, you'll still take a little bit of damage uh, depending on how far away you are from the enemy. So it's, it's not just, you know, a bunch of damage or none at all. Like the closer you are, even if you're blocking him, you will still take some damage. Uh, so I was actually pretty impressed with the combat. The hotbar is not as uh, pervasive as I thought it would be. I pretty much assumed that it would be mostly hotbar combat, but because it drains a good portion of your magicka, it's actually not that useful all that often, which is good because I, I think having the melee combat and the magic in there, it really serves to mix things up and, and make it not like a lot of MMOs where you feel like you're just sort of walking up to an enemy and hitting the same key over and over and over again. I didn't fight actually any humans in the game when I played. Uh, most of what I killed were animals, like I said, polar bears. Uh, I killed a chicken and looted it for its guts, so apparently that's a thing you can do in this game. Uh, I'm sold pretty much based on that. Uh, like I said, seeing the game in action and actually getting your hands on it are two completely different experiences. And I think this one's going to turn out pretty good. I think so. So of course we're going to have more coverage of tons of games here from PAX, so make sure you're subscribed and keep watching. Want more coverage of events like PAX? Then why not support our sponsor, Netflix? Netflix lets you stream your favorite shows and movies straight to your home. All you need is an internet connection and a Netflix-enabled device like a PC or Mac, a smartphone, or a video game console. Hit up netflix.com slash rev3games and we will hook you up with a free trial just for signing up. Every sign up helps support the show and puts affordable entertainment back on your television screen.